Hello everybody, uh, it's Chris Payton here, genealogist based in Ayrshire in Scotland, uh, with news of my latest book that's just been published by Pen and Sword Family History called Tracing Your Irish Ancestors Through Land Records. Now, the first thing to say about this book is just arrived in the post um, and I've written seven books for Pen and Sword. This is the seventh, and it's the heaviest. Um, it actually surprised me. I, I, I've obviously squeezed as much into it as I can physically get away with. Um, so I'm quite pleased. It's a it's quite a weighty tome. Um, but this book, what I'm trying to do with it is to try to explain that the glass is most definitely half full when it comes to Irish research and not half empty. A lot of people will tell you that all the records were destroyed in 1922 in the Civil War. No, they weren't. Uh, a lot of records also survived and a lot of records weren't in the four courts in the first place. So some of the records that can really help with research to, to plug the gaps for the records that were destroyed or which haven't survived for whatever reason are land records. They, there are lots of records documenting who owned land, who rented land, who occupied land, who used the land. Um, and they, they, they can be a useful way of plugging some of the, the, the missing information that we need and indeed can take us further back in time as well in, in certain circumstances. So this book, it has seven chapters. And if I can just get the chapter list here, the, the first chapter is called The Lie of the Land. And it basically describes all the various uh, archival um, repositories where records are held. So the various national archives in Dublin and Belfast and in London even, um, local archives, uh, specific archives such as the Valuation Office and the Property Registration Authority and the Land and Property Services in Northern Ireland, uh, the Manuscripts Commission, the Architectural Archive and so on and so on. Um, then in Chapter 2, I, I, I probably get into a bit of trouble for this, but this is where I provide a brief history of Ireland, you know, because God loves a trier. And uh, what I've tried to do is to provide an overview of the main sort of events in the history of Ireland, particularly those that will impact the ownership and occupancy of land, which is obviously the focus of the book. Then in chapter three, I have a section looking at boundaries and administration, because Ireland was carved up historically into various different units from uh, the provinces, the, the baronies, the, the, county, the provinces, counties, baronies, um, parishes, townlands, poor law unions, registration districts, dispensary districts, all that kind of stuff. Now, there'll be a few surprises in there. And um, did you know, for example, that uh, James VI um, changed Ireland from five provinces to four? There used to be a fifth province called Meath. And in fact, in earlier times, there were more provinces than the four that we know of today. Um, but I tried to explain what the purpose of these administrative units was for, where they were used, but also how you can convert the name of one unit to work out what the associated territories are. So if you know the name of a town land that your ancestor came from, well, which parish was that a part of, or which barony was a part that a part of, or which county even? Um, not always as easy as it sounds, because some town lands um, have the same name in different parts of the country. So it's a, it's a, a wee sort of section to help you sort of um, navigate where um, the territories were. Then in chapter four, I have a section called Where Were They?, which looks at records that can tell us a bit about geographical information about where ancestors were based. So we're used to the vital records of births, marriages and deaths. But as well as names and ages and, and dates, they also provide information of where people resided or what the territorial units were, where the administration was that they were collated within. Um, and other records, such as the census records, some of which have survived, some of which haven't. Um, earlier census records, taxation, ecclesiastical censuses and street directories, all that kind of stuff to just place people in a location at a particular time. Then in chapter five is where we really get stuck in, and that's with the valuation um, records going back to the Down Survey of Ireland from the, the 16th, uh, sorry, from the 17th century to the tithe records, the, the townland valuation, the Griffiths valuation, um, valuation appeals, valuation revision books or cancelled land books, and, and how you can use all these resources uh, to track the occupancy and the size of a, of a holding across time, and um, particularly in the 19th century and into the 20th century. And uh, then chapter six, I look at tenancy and ownership. Who owned land outright? On what basis did they own land? Um, did they hold land through various forms of leases? If so, were the records? Um, did they rent records? Uh, sorry, did they rent properties? 
Um, also things like probate and uh, the Irish Land Commission, the Land Registry, uh, Church Land Commission, and of course the all-important Registry of Deeds, uh, which is a bit of a science in its own right. But I try to work through um, with examples how you use those records and how you can locate information about your family within them. And then the, the final chapter, chapter seven, is a sense of place. And that's resources that can help you to understand an area, maps and gazetteers and parish histories and how to locate those. And then there's a further reading section and a, an index. So I hope this book, uh, Tracing Your Irish Ancestors Through Land Records, can help with your research. It was a lot of fun writing it. Um, it covers the whole island of Ireland before partition and Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland to this day um, when things changed and diverged a little bit. Um, the book is available from Pen and Sword. It was actually uh, published a little bit earlier than I was expecting to. It was supposed to be the end of the month. Um, but the, the book is available and I hope that it helps with your research. And if it does help with your research, Maybe just drop us a wee note and let me know how it helped with your research. I'm always interested to get feedback. Um, so please, if you're interested, buy the book. Uh, let people know that it's now available. Um, help the good folk out at Pen and Sword. And uh, good luck with your research.